wanted to, to work through some of my thoughts about tyranny and oppression. I've drawn up a little diagram, which you can see here, and it shows that modes of being can be divided into two competing systems. So you've got the, the champions and the, uh, the principle that the champions are supporting, and then the people who uh, serve the, the principle, so who are, who are being, uh, being served by and who are supporting this, this principle. They're not expanding it, they're just making it keep on working. And the, the names here might not be perfect, but I'm trying to work out the idea and figure out how this all, how this all plays together. Uh, so, what you have is a, uh, a, a two different systems. One of heroism, the, the principle that has a champion, and they're called heroes. Heroes go out into the unknown, confront the potential that is untapped, and uh, expand the system of excellence. So, uh, or the principle of excellence. And then free, uh, we'll call them free men, although, of course, women can also be in this system, but free men is an existing term, so I'm going to use it. Uh, support and serve the system of excellence. But uh, there is another system. That's not the only way that you can exist in the world. You can also exist in the system of oppression. And... Uh, I, I want to make uh, clear that these systems do not have to be... Well, anyway, okay, so so you got you can have the system of oppression. Um, and the system of oppression is served by tyrants, and tyrants create this, uh, this system. So maybe we'll call it tyranny. So we've got the, the, the principle of, of freedom or excellence and the principle of tyranny or oppression, something like that. And so tyrants, then, are the ones who go out into the unknown, who conquer, who, who would, one might say, like, colonize or go out and, and uh, are, are expanding this system of oppression and who are benefiting by it. And the heroes, of course, also benefit greatly by the system of excellence because they are supported by uh, all the free people who are interested in them succeeding. And in the same way, tyrants are supported by the system of oppression because they are served and supported by all the slaves who are interested in them succeeding. And so then slaves are the ones who are serve, serve and maintain the system of oppression uh, from within. And then the tyrants expand it into the world around them. So uh, I want to make it clear that you could have um, only one half of this diagram and it would, it would work. It would be able to maintain itself and, and succeed. Uh, but both halves do exist in the world. Like, there are people who are free and there are people who are slaves. Uh, and not only that, but uh, at, the, at the servile level, at least, or at the maintenance level, we'll call, uh, at the maintenance level, both can, both can have valid... Uh, how do I say it? Both modes of being are valid in terms of individual choice. So if you want to be free, you can act as a free person even in a system of oppression. And if you want to be a slave, you can act as a slave even in a system of freedom or excellence. So if you're, excuse me, if you're able to, if you're able to choose, I guess you, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't necessarily choose freedom in a system of oppression, and that's probably the difference between them, is that in a system of excellence, you can still choose to be a slave. Uh, for example, uh, if you have the freedom to make uh, arbitrary contractual obligations on yourself and to accept them, uh, then you could arbitrarily accept the obligation of being a slave and, and allowing others to make decisions for you instead of making your own decisions. Uh, like someone who chooses to go into a huge amount of debt, for example. Uh, but in a system of oppression, one wouldn't necessarily be free to take on oneself the obligations and responsibilities of a free person. Um, so that is that is kind of the, the overview of the whole thing. And uh, Jordan Peterson got me thinking about this, or 
he he started talking about how um, people who only see the world in terms of oppression don't like the idea of there being other ways to deal with the world. And I started thinking about that and why is that and what is the what is so attractive about uh, Jordan Peterson's portrayal of heroism? And so a lot of these ideas are coming directly out of uh, the listening to his talks and his lectures and uh, kind of meditating on what his, um, the implications, the social implications of his ideas. So if you have these two systems and, and uh, oppression cannot allow uh, free people to exist, but heroes and excellence can allow slaves to exist. Um, and, and I want to make it clear that you can make, you can have free people and slaves both serving in a system of excellence because there's crossover here. So slaves can still express excellence and support the system of excellence. Uh, and free people could support the system of oppression uh, or the, the, the mode of oppression really. It's not really necessarily a system. It's, it's a, a different mode of operating in the world. Um, but if you can imagine that if you're in a, uh, a mode of oppression and you want to maintain that, then the easiest way to do so would just be to convince everyone that the other mode doesn't exist. It's, it's not an option. And then of course, the only options are either be a tyrant or a slave, but in so doing, you're acting as a tyrant because a tyrant always opposes, uh, heroes in their in their quest for for excellence and uh supports the system of oppression or the, the mode of oppression which allows them to create more slaves uh and and i want to make clear also that usually individuals are more than one thing in here. It's it's a fractional thing. It's not like, oh, well, you're a tyrant, so you can't be anything else. Well, no, you could be a tyrant and a hero and a free person and a slave all at the same time in different senses and different contexts or at different times even. So this, uh, this isn't an exclusive diagram. This is just kind of trying to chart out how you can operate. And there might be an, a third... Um, a third mode in here, something having to do with like, uh, uh, like cooperation and uh, society and stuff like that. But personally, I'm very low in agreeableness, and so those kinds of um, those kinds of modes don't occur to me, and so I don't really have a good sense for how that would work and and what terms to put on those. So, like, if you have your own ideas about how that might work, great. I you know. Uh, I'd love to hear about them and, and see what those, uh, you know, what other modes there might be. But, you know, try to keep them orthogonal, obviously. Um, so then if you're a hero, you're, when you're not, uh, when you're not trying to conquer the unknown, you're also trying to, so there's the, there's the feminine, uh, there's the feminine malevolence, which is the, uh, the savagery of nature, let's call it. And then there's the masculine malevolence, which is the oppressive tyranny. And so heroes go out and confront both of those, I guess, uh, not necessarily unknowns, but go out and confront both of those malevolences. And uh, the malevolence they, they confront is tyranny. And so heroes are trying to uh, ideally, heroes would desire to eliminate all tyrants. Um, but it's difficult because when you create excellence, it allows for tyranny because it allows for a person to accumulate the incentives required to entice people to become slaves. Uh, the, the example that jumps to mind is in... I think it's Genesis. Yeah, it, it, the example that jumps to mind is in Genesis where Joseph is a, a hero, in a sense, and uh, creates a system of excellence where the state accumulates a large amount of, uh, you know, in the service of the state. He, he uh, is a proponent of excellence in the service of the state, and the state accumulates a large amount of grain, and then when the famine comes, the state has the necessary incentive, 
which is like you don't starve to death, which, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, but then that allows the creation of a tyranny because then everyone becomes a slave of the state. So excellence can create tyrants. And uh, in the same way, oppression can create heroes. So you could, and this happens all the time where there's a, or it happens in stories all the time, and I imagine it must happen in real life too, where someone is, oh, well, Solzhenitsyn is a great example of someone who, in the presence of oppression, rises to the occasion and heroically confronts the tyranny which uh, results in the tyrant's overthrow, more or less. So you can see that, that there's crossover here, and, and in the same way, uh, free people can use their freedom to create oppression just as, as easily as they could create excellence, and slaves could uh, create excellence just as easily as oppression. So uh, there's a lot of crossover between these two camps, and I think that's probably why uh, these, these ideas exist and have been around for so long, or I mean, I imagine they've been around for a long time, uh, and certainly Jordan Peterson thinks, seems to think so, uh, but also why it's futile to try to um, ignore one or the other half of this, this conceptual space. Uh, both modes are even, I would go so far as to say, both modes are valid modes. Uh, you could imagine, even if there was no malevolence, that there would still be uh, people who, in freedom, choose to become slaves because they're not capable of making decisions on their own. Uh, and in this sense, uh, in the sense I'm using for slavery is, is people who are in some degree responsible, or uh, people who are in some degree irresponsible for their decisions and who allow others or, or are forced to allow others to make decisions for them, whether that was on their part and their choice or whether as a result of their situation. The, the best example is children, because children are slaves, of course, to their parents, to the degree that their parents are responsible for their children's actions and have authority over their children. And all cultures, to some degree, allow parents that, uh, that power. And so, uh, well, except, I mean, I suppose if there were cultures existent that don't allow parents any authority over their children, then they would not, by default, be slaves. But almost all of all of the cultures that I can think of uh, allow parents to make authority authoritative decisions for their children, and so uh, in that sense, children are slaves. And but uh, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily being oppressed. They could just be they could just be slaves, and they don't have to support uh, the mode of oppression. So I could imagine. Uh, a system where you had heroes, excellence, freedom, and slaves, or free people and slave people. Um, and I could imagine a system where you had tyrants and oppression and slaves with no free people. Um, but I think that's probably as far as, and then of course, what we really have is we, we have tyrants because excellence affords the opportunity for people to become tyrants. And, you know, that is, that is a valid decision. Whether or not it is a morally upright decision is, I would say no, but, and of course a lot of people would say no, but the tyrants of course would say yes because they're, they're making that decision and obviously they think what they're doing is right. Uh, so anyway, so that's the, that's the diagram. Um, people who are in, or who are supporting, oh, so the main thing I wanted to say was that uh, heroes, that anyone on the, the excellence side of the diagram, anyone you know, supporting the mode of excellence, will not attempt to, to uh, deny that the existence of, uh, of the, oppression, the oppressive mode, because they will support the idea of uh, that some people may choose to become slaves. A free person may choose to become a slave because they're free and they get to make that decision. Um, but someone who's supporting the system of, or the mode of oppression, will be incentivized to deny the existence of the heroic, excellent, free person side of this, this conceptual space. Uh, and as a result, oh, that was another thing I want to say. So as a result, uh, in the United States, there is this idea that, oh, we've destroyed slavery. Because slavery doesn't exist anymore. We can't, like, no one can be slaves. Everyone is free. Um, 
And what that's doing is it's not actually creating free people. What it's doing is it's renaming slavery and using the name free to describe slavery. Because you can't get rid, if you really have freedom, then you have to allow for slavery because people can choose to become slaves. Uh, like selling yourself into slavery is like a thing that happens all the time in the scriptures and is a is again a valid decision and and people do it all the time like i uh i am a slave in the sense that i do not have uh the wherewithal and uh and understanding to make all of my medical decisions and so i allow the authority of some doctors over some decisions, some medical decisions uh, over myself. And in that, to the degree that I do that, I am a medical slave. I am allowing other people to make decisions for me. Uh, and that's, again, that's a, a valid and I would say even a moral, a morally upright decision to choose to become a slave in a place where you uh, are not capable or comfortable even uh, making decisions for yourself is even a heroic act because you're you're acknowledging the excellence of others in their ability to exercise authority over you, uh, and and successfully and and uh, productively exercise authority over you. Um, so, if if you hear someone saying, "Oh, well, we can't have slavery at all. We've got everyone's got to be free," then I would propose that that person is a tyrant. Uh, supporting the mode of oppression and renaming slavery as freedom because you can't actually eliminate slavery uh, because, as I said, free people can choose to become slaves. Uh, so if you hear someone saying that, it, you know, that's a, that's a clue. Okay, this person is actually a tyrant or is acting in the mode of a tyrant trying to support oppression and trying to ignore and eliminate one half of the, the diagram here and, uh, and create a system where everyone says that they're free, but everyone in fact is slaves. And that's, I think, the system that we have in the United States right now. Uh, everyone says, oh, well, everyone's free, everyone's free, everyone's free. But of course, everyone can't be free in every way. And so what they're actually saying is everyone's a slave and freedom doesn't actually exist. It, it's a, a non-concept. And this whole, and then of course, excellence can't really exist and heroes can't really exist. Uh, and it's an attempt to, to um, achieve victory on the part of oppression, which, again, like, okay, uh, that's, that's a valid strategy. Uh, I don't think it's a moral one, and I think it's contemptible, but, um, but that's what a lot of people choose to do. So, and then I guess, the, on the other hand, if you do find yourself saying that, uh, don't, don't do that. Acknowledge that, free, that freedom and slavery are, are different things, and that slavery is a morally valid uh, mode of being that that everyone is a slave to some degree because not everyone has complete authority over their own self and does not accept full responsibility for their own decisions. There is, you know, in everyone, there is some degree in which we subject our own personal authority to the authority of others and allow others to make decisions for us. To that degree, we're slaves. So, so that's and that's fine. That and, and actually, that's great because then we don't have to have responsibility for everything that we do. But I would say that ideally, uh, we would all live in in the the mode of excellence and freedom, and not um, we would all be able to to leave slavery behind us. But that I mean, like that's ideally, and and we're, we're not in an ideal situation. So anyway, that's a that's a cool little diagram. Uh, slavery. Don't allow other people to. Uh, if if you if you suspect someone of uh, supporting oppression and being a tyrant, uh, listen for them saying, "Oh, freedom, freedom, freedom. No one can be a slave. Everyone has to be free," uh, because that again basically is a, a strategy for supporting oppression and being a tyrant. And uh, I think it's a pretty good tell. And I think it's been going on for a pretty long time. And, um, and so it should, be, it should be pretty widely accepted as a strategy, and so I think it'll be easy to, to call out and, and address.